Hello everybody, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James and we're back live twice in one week. West went live Tuesday with a balsa plane. I'm here with a boat and not just any boat. This is the largest racing boat we got in the Bancroft lineup. And when they sent me both of them, I actually didn't even register the size of them. And when I saw the two boxes, I was like, oh, these are so cool. I've never driven a race boat that's gonna be this fast or this large uh, before. So I'm super excited. And as I built the first one already, and then I actually, I opened this box, I built it, and then realized, you know what? I wanna show everybody. So let's do a live on it. So I disassembled it and put it back in the box. And we're just gonna quickly put it together and go over it because it is awesome. The pictures that are on the website currently don't do the product justice. So uh, hopefully in the next couple days here, when we do this, get the assembly and the, uh, you know, the sailing video, if you will, the racing video, um, we're gonna have some fun with it. So I just wanna welcome whoever's gonna be here today. I see Victor and Slapnuts in the chat. What's up guys, what's going on? And uh, yeah, we'll get into it, but I wanna show you the first, let me slide this one out of the way. That's a yellow one, just to show you how large and in charge this boat is. This is about, it's over three feet long. You know, I've never driven a, you know, an RTR uh, race boat that uh, is this large before. So I'm super stoked because having the larger uh, warships, um, you know, those are the largest boats I have experience with. They don't go too fast, but what I like about them is their stability. And just like RC aircraft, just like probably RC cars, bigger is always better. You always get more stable uh, the larger you get to scale. So, you know, I know with a lot of race boats have like self-riding, things like that, especially the smaller ones. Um, you know, they'd have uh, self-riding capabilities, so when it would flip over, you know, because they're very squirrely, if you will, for lack of a better term, when you're on the water with a smaller, lighter boat, you know, you're, I'm sure it'll happen with this, but if, you know, if you're full throttle and you try to cut it too fast, you're going to flip the whole boat over. Now, obviously, I'm sure I'll figure out a way to do that with one of these on my own, which is fine, but... Um, I wanted to, uh, you know, I don't want that to happen because what's awesome about these boats as well, the Alpha Boat, is that it's 4S or 6S ready out of the box. It's got a 90 amp ESC inside. So included out of the box are two 5,002 S packs and they run together to make 4S, um, but you could go with two 3S packs, which I'm definitely gonna do. One of them I will set up for 4S. Uh, I already have this one actually set up for 6S um, and one I'll set up for 4S and that just, and the, the, the boat itself comes with two different screws, um, similar to an airplane that does the same thing. Uh, the smaller, the larger screw will be for the smaller S, uh, so 4S with the larger screw, 6S with the uh, smaller screw. Um, and we'll get to that in a second when I show you, but uh, all around super cool. So we'll get into that one when, uh, when we're ready. So let's open, this is the yellow uh, Deep V and we'll take it out of the box and do it again. What's going on RC Flying Veteran? What's up, man? Bondo Sanders, Brad Darnell, how you doing? Smokey, what's going on? Michael, Brian Chambers. Welcome in this Friday. It's a beautiful Friday. And like I said, I already opened things, so I had to actually find the bags because I had thrown them away. <laughs> but I'm gonna pretend I haven't done this before. So out of the box, first and foremost, right on top, you get your boat stand, which is nice. They're made of foam. Uh, I actually like them better than the wood for this purpose, uh, the wooden ones that come with the, uh, you know, with the warships. But then you do get two manuals. One's gonna go over your transmitter and how that would work, and the other one's gonna have your assembly and everything you need to know about the boat itself. Then inside, I'll just show you real quick. It's packaged nicely. You know, shouldn't have any issues with that. Everything, you know, surrounded in foam, at least on these sides. And then obviously this box is put in a heftier uh a heftier shipping box when you receive it so i'm going to pull this out now actually i could do it like this i just lift it right up let's take it out in one shot and then we get rid of that oh i got foam in my face i that foam goes everywhere what's going on what's up bill how you doing Need nav lights on a race boat. That would be cool. I didn't even think of that. But right off the bat, checking out one of the first things I did was opening up the uh, the canopy and just the the beefiness of the of the hole in the top itself. Like 
you know, compared to other ones that just slip sort of under. It's a nice like interlocking system. You can know that that's not going anywhere with the steel up front, so that goes in. And then from what Bill tells me in the chat, Bill, you know, my boss, he's the product. He brings in a lot of the Surface products, pretty much all the Surface products you see at Motion RC. You know, uh, what'd you say this was a blown um, fiberglass hull? So it's different than the smaller molded foams you get um, in smaller boats. So um, he could explain that process, but it's something, uh, you know, boaters would love. Now I already, the boat does, the, sh the ship, if the boat, the boat does come with, um, what's it called? Comes with a balloon and a zip tie. I already put the receiver in it. So the receiver will be here installed. I didn't want to rip the balloon off because I taped it and water tied it already and then put it back. But it's right there underneath. It's already pre-installed. Um, all I did was take the two leads out, wrap it in a balloon and put it back. And then the, uh, the antenna actually has this nice little spot that weaves right in. And there's just this little like uh, rubber piece on the that you slide the antenna through and then that just attaches right over the top like that so it's not going anywhere and it's not getting in the way which is nice not that things tend to move around too much and then you got as you can see inside and you got everything uh tucked away really neatly so i'm just finding my finger on there but there's your esc so 90 at bsc water cooled you got the brushless motor here again you're running two battery packs so you got two uh, spots to put your batteries and that's going to be everything. <laughs> Why doesn't this plane have wings? Yeah, right? I bet if you put wings on it, you could fly it. It would probably fly right off the right off the lake with the speed because now this is telling me on 6s We should be getting around 50 miles per hour. So <laughs> You know like legit 50 miles per hour is what I expect to see on this So I'm gonna take it slow at the start. We'll do this on we'll do the 4s one first And then we're gonna work our way up because I've never run I've never run an RC boat on 6S before. Uh, any idea on the hull thickness? DD Yoda man. Um, hmm. I mean, I would only be guessing. I mean, it's, you know, if it's quarter inch, that would be a lot maybe, I don't know. It's hard to tell. I feel like I'm right there, but it feels, it feels solid. It feels like a solid boat. But now on both sides, now I'm gonna pull first, actually, let's do this first. Let me get my, let me set up my, um, <clears throat> my stand. And what I did first was do the two sides of the stand first. So all the flat parts at the bottom, you know, and they just press together. But nice foam, you're not gonna damage anything. When you do the smaller ends first, then you have five spots for the, the sides and they just press right in nice and easy boom 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 I'm building in there what's up everyone what's up Wes what's going on man that's fast on the water I know right I I you know we'll see what I like too is um and you'll see in a second again all the other smaller that's not even that small, but all the other smaller boats, everything's fixed. Um, one thing that's going to be new to me, this boat, you're able to actually tilt the, uh, the screw. So you can tilt that, that shaft if, you know, it's, and it says in the manual for calmer waters or rougher waters. So you leave it, leave it level if it's a mix. If it's all glass on the, on the lake, you either put it down or put it up. We get into the manual in a second and vice versa if it's, uh, if it's a rough day. If it's too rough of a day, I'm not going to be going out anyway with this. <laughs> because one thing about this boat, it doesn't have self-riding. So if I flip it, it's been really chilly out here. <laughs> I'm not jumping in the lake and I don't have a little dinghy to get me where I got to go. So, all right. So all of your stuff um, that you're going to need comes on the backs of these two sides. So again, I had already opened a lot of this already. I took everything out, but you get your two lipos. And this one, once and I jammed it in there now, there we go. So these are 5,000 2S packs with XT90s on them. And I already put the Velcro, they include two strips of Velcro. So that, that helps, you know, obviously secure it down with the Velcro straps that are already in there too. So it's just added security. Then you get your uh, charge cable. So that's gonna power the charger that's on the other side. And you get your, 
You get your screws. Did I drop one? There you go. You get both screws. Again, metal. One, and they're labeled. One's 4S, one's 6S. We'll get to that in a second. You get a baggie with uh, some Allen keys, three different Allen keys for the three different types of uh, screws used. You get four screws. That's going to be to put on your, um, your, turning, your turning blades um, and the rudder. <clears throat> and then uh, that's it. And then you actually get some, they give you some extra uh, XC90s in there that you can solder on to a different pack. So if you had a 5003S or 2S uh, that had the wrong connector, you can you know, make those connections with the extras uh, that they give you, which is kind of nice. Um, and then inside, be careful with these bad boys. These are like razor blades, they're like knives, but these are your turning, turning fins here that are gonna be assembled on the back. So they are pretty sharp. Be careful with those metal and then all metal on your rudder and everything comes pretty much pre-assembled. It's gonna fit perfectly, you'll see in a second uh, when it goes on, which is awesome. So that side is complete. And then the other side is gonna have, as we mentioned, the other part of your charger, the main part that that plugs into, and then you got your transmitter. Fits nicely, and again, the transmitter itself, nothing too spectacular about it, but it's gonna do everything uh, you need it to do. You're able to trim, uh, your throttle, your steering, reverse, all that good stuff. So uh, that's gonna get it done right there. So now that's everything. Let me lay it out here on the box and then we'll quickly put it together. But I wanna show you the, uh, the two different screws. Again, I already have 6S on the red one, the 6S screw. So then I, I'm gonna put the 4S on this, but you can see the size difference. So like right there, that says 6S. I don't know if you could see that, Alex. I don't know how close you can get. There you go. I'll hold it up. There we go. 4S and 6S. So let's, there we go. Uh, there you go. Can you see it? There it is. 4S, 6S. I think it's, is it hard to tell? You can see one's, one is definitively, definitively larger and the larger one again for the 4S. The, uh, you know, smaller one for the 6S. So we're gonna be using 4S for our purposes today for this one, because I already, again, have it on that, and I've said that a couple times. And then the rest of the stuff, again, that's gonna come out of the box. So all in all, the fact that this is RTR, that you get, you're getting two batteries, you know, not much work to get together for the amount of speed that we're gonna get when we're on the water. So that's pretty much all you get. You get four nuts, you get, and then you get four screws, two longer ones and two shorter ones. And the four nuts with them. So the shorter ones are for the uh, turning, the turning fins, and the longer ones are for the rudder. And then when we get into the manual, uh, the manual has everything you need. It says, start with the rudder. We go and the only other thing you're gonna need um, are two, why am I forgetting? Why am I forgetting what they're called? It's funny when I'm live, I'm like forgetting what the, the bits are called, but I got a 5 16th and a 9 32 uh, bit for my nuts to uh, get those installed. <laughs> Slap nuts is in here, it's just, it's on my mind. <laughs> What's going on, guys? So let's start getting the rudder installed. So they already have the uh, the uh, the you know the rudder rod is all right here. Everything just fits perfectly. All you have to do is loosen up the. I guess I don't want to call it a horn. Why am I forgetting what everything's called right now? But that just fits there perfectly. So once you slide that on, don't lock it down yet. You can lock down the rudder once you turn on the on the boat and make sure the servo's centered. So you can leave it like that. It really won't even turn off. They gave you enough slack there uh, to get through. And then all we gotta do is pop our two longer screws right through. One, two, and then I'm gonna take this is the one I need. Yeah, that's it. So I just pop this on here and try to catch it quickly with my, let me catch it with my finger first. Catch it with my finger and then tighten it down with the tool. 
That's how I always do it. There we go. First one's caught. Now the second one, of course, doing this live. As always, Wes knows all about this. Easier when you're doing it. All right, we got a question. Is the hardware rated for salt water? Ron, Juan, Smokey de la Garza. I'm not sure. Bill, if you are watching, please, uh, we're going to have to find that out. Is it rated for salt water? Now, I don't know what, honestly, I don't know what rated for salt water would mean, what they do to it to protect from salt water, but I would suggest uh, if you take anything uh, in salt water that you're going to give your boat a nice rinse the second you take it out, like right away. So if you're at a beach with this thing, hopefully there's showers or something there that's going to allow you to, uh, you know, just dump the boat underneath it just to get all that salt off. Um, but then again, the salt really, I guess salt would corrode. Probably looks like a real boat. I mean, if you're a real boater, I remember my uncle had a boat. I never had a boat. Uh, but, you know, we'd get back from boating and he would spend hours cleaning the thing. <laughs> so it was like, you know, what do they say? Your best, the best day for a boat owner is the day you buy it and the day you sell it is the, uh, is the joke. But, oh, you know what? I'm going to take that out. I'm just going to hold this here. And then we're just tighten down, tighten down the rudder screws. There we go. All right. So rudder secure again. No need to tighten that down. I'm gonna do it just for the, just for the time being, because actually I'm I have no intention of plugging this in today. I don't like running my boat motor at all when it's not in the water, because again water cooled and the only thing you have to do here and they gave you some extra slack too inside so I, I can cut this and I'll do that before I get out there if I you know get going but they give you the tube that's going to allow again the water to help cool off uh, the system get the cooling through so you just got to attach this to the top of this straw or hose if you will and it's nice and snug if you just push it all the way down. That isn't going anywhere. And then you could send it through. And then actually, it's nice and out of the way that way, which is good. And part of that hose is already zip tied down in there, which is nice. So that's step one. That is done. And then it will be on to the, uh, the turning fins, if you will. So they will go like this. <clears throat> so we'll put one screw and now these are the two smaller screws that are included in the box and again once it's through let it let it dangle a bit just catch it with my finger you know just again be careful no sharp movements with this thing you know be careful you can put them down if you're uh you know if you're around kids or around you know, transporting it uh, around the house because you come around the corner with that thing. That wouldn't be fun. And then where's my, uh, there it is. Is this the one I need? Yeah, this is the one I need. Let's get that on there. I'm just going to tighten it just to the point where now I can move it freehand. And now the manual says 45 degrees, but these again are adjustable um, depending on your situation. So it's the type of thing, start at 45 degrees. Um, and then, you know, you could keep making changes on these, um, you know, if need be. So that's one. And again, just to show you a little more up close, like just how sharp, like it is like a knife. Like, I feel like you get a, you definitely give yourself a nasty cut with that. Cause it is like, We'll say it's serrated, but it is sharpened, you know, on one side. So I put the sharpened sides on the outside facing out because one side is like flat and one side is, uh, is sharp. So I face the sharpened, the sharpened sides out. What's going on in there? Boat, break out another thousand. <laughs> well, cars are no different. I just, I, one of my cars blew in alternator this weekend my wife got stuck far away that's always fun it's a chevy with that stupid auto i think it's that stupid auto auto start and stop i hate that feature it's the first car i've ever had that had that like you're just sitting at a light and the car would 
stop. And I think over time, because it's the first time I ever blew an alternator on a car. Well, I didn't do it. <laughs> My wife's car. But, you know, I ran out. She was just saying like, the whole car shut off on her while she was heading home. And I'm like, how could the car shut off? Like, the car's running. The battery's charging. So the fact that the battery wasn't going, I'm like, something's up. I went there. It just wouldn't hold the charge, but it was just wild. The car just... Just dead on a rock. Killed my battery, killed everything. That's another story. What did Bill say? If you use a smaller diameter on 6S, cavitation will be a problem from RPM and top speed potential will not be reached. That's what I found from running this model. The results may vary. Okay. Hardware is plated for protection. Any boat using salt water needs to be completely rinsed. Yes. Sorry, I'm looking ahead and I'm not focusing on this. Come on, man. I gotta replace the Allen key. Just use my. I always tend to use the, the stuff they give me for some reason when I have infinitely more tools. All right, so I tighten that to the point where I can adjust it freely on my own, get it to where I like it. Again, I'm not going for perfection right now. We'll worry about that when it is time to put it on the water, which I hope is soon. I just had to send myself um, some Dean's connector. Uh, actually didn't have any 5,000 3S's. So I need two 5,000 3S's are on the way. They should be here today. So hopefully we're gonna get this thing on the water uh, Monday, uh, which would be awesome. And I did tighten that down. Now I can see that I tightened that and it's not even that strong. There we go. Okay, so now we got our fins installed. We've got rudder installed. Next, we have the screw. And that's what you need. That's the only screw that uses the uh, 5 16th. That's what we need that for. And that I'm going to want the tool to do. So now the screw is notched, which is cool. So there's like a little notch on the, uh, on the place that the screw is, if you see that. And there's a notch on top, so it fits. It only fits one way, like it won't even go all the way down flush if it's not notched. You can see, and then bang. Hard to see, that fin like covers it, but basically that's how that works. So we get that on there. Again, start it with your hand. Oh, and then I have it on the left. This is hard. I'm not a, I'm not a lefty tight, tighty. Ratchet it, ratchet it, ratchet it, ratchet it. It comes with a spacer already, like the manual does call, you know, you need like uh, some spacing here. But now, this is what I was uh, gonna say. It's hard to, I guess it would be easy to show if I took it off, but basically, these two screws um, for the rudder. The first one goes through, so like this whole plate that you see the the, the drive shaft is connected to here, like that plate. There's a hole and then there's a like a sliding hole, if you will. So basically you loosen up the bottom, you loosen the bottom screw and you'd be able to, and the top, and you'd be able to slide this and it would tilt the, uh, the shaft up and down. And it says about 10 degrees either way, depending on the, uh, depending on the type of water that you're going to be you're going to be running the boat on so in the manual itself here this is what it shows alex if you can zoom out and uh check this section these three one two three so you can see it says was it one degree zero degrees one degree one degree so above adjustment suitable for racing on flat water surface uh so if it's tilted up zero uh, degrees, which is the way it comes out of the box. Ah, oh, there you go. So you see, that's what the shaft looks like behind those screws. Actually, it's just one full slide. So now you loosen them both, and you can and you can get that tilt, and then uh, you know tighten it down yourself. And then when you go negative one degrees, would be for medium and big wind and wave. So we'll see. I I, I never uh, I never dealt with that. I've seen you know obviously. Real racing, real boats have that and be like, I'm assuming it'd be on a switch and like some hydraulic motion will do it, do it yourself or who knows, maybe it's automatic. I don't know, these days I'm not a boater, but um, 
that's a pretty cool feature and something that just gives you an added versatility. And then Bill, uh, I want Bill to help me out or could someone else, ah, thrust angle adjustments. What are these two? Now these are, are new to me because I was looking at the manual. I gotta see, or did I miss that part? I asked Bill before this started, but he didn't, I, didn't, I didn't catch her answer before there because I was just thinking, these come pre-installed, see these? There's two, one on each side, one's like under the rudder, but you can, you know, you can adjust and, you know, I'm assuming it's another thing. Okay, helps with turns. What are they called? Are they called? No, they're not called rooster tails. Outdrive angle and trim tabs are the two most useful adjustments in achieving peak performance. So if I, you know, if you come here and you adjust, I could push this screw down and push those down, or I could push it up. I'd have to loosen the, there's, there's a nut here that you would loosen, and then the screw here would, would drive that down or bring it up, which is gonna help you uh, either way. So just trim tabs, okay. Trim tabs it is for the win. So we'll see, you know, again, these videos will be fun <laughs> for me to learn. Um, I'm, I'm stoked to get it out on the lake and just, uh, you know, rocking around. So now that's pretty much it. That's the only, the, the only three things you have to install there are that. And then, as I said, putting the, uh, putting the receiver in a balloon and you're good to go. So just showing you the, let's show you the back of the yellow compared with the back of the red, you know, I put the, the red had to be on 6S because red's always faster. But we'll take them both. Cornering effect speed. Don't forget red, right, return. And it has some good weight to it too which is nice. That's the other thing, like I, I actually I didn't even know. I'm, I'm assuming uh, I won't have to ballast this, like my warships or anything, but maybe you might, because there's no real like water line to, to judge the way, uh, the way the big ships have. But then the rest of the, the manual sort of just, um, you know, goes over a little bit about the transmitter, you know, anyone who's played with an RC car, RC boat, uh, it's going to know the transmitter pretty quick. And again, we're going to do a full overview video, and I'll go over more of that in that video for anyone who is not used to these. It's not used to boats, but all around, I think it's a great, a great boat. What you're getting, the size of this boat with everything. Uh, yeah, let's put that down. Sorry. Get that in. Bang. That locks down. Nice. I mean... I feel like I'm playing a guitar or something. <laughs> it's gigantic. Like, I was just so excited. It's, like, clean, you know? Really nice. All around. Super stoked to see how these do. I've never driven... I don't even know if I've driven an RC... I've probably driven an RC car over 50 miles an hour for sure. But, uh... No, no. Was the round boss for a flood chamber in the future? Okay, no ballast will affect self-writing. I don't know if this has self-writing. I don't think it does. They're controlled so that you can level your boat. You might have more weight on one side than the other. Okay. So if anything, like I'll bring, uh, you know, I bring my BBs that I use for uh, all the warships that I've done. You know, I have a whole bag of them that I just bring with me. Put some in there if I need it. I can tape it down if I were to need it. Uh, the more vertical you set the turn fins, the tighter, more edgy the handling feels. See, Bill knows the stuff. Like it. So you can lever your boat. No ballast. Uh, what was the round boss for a flood chamber in the future? The round boss. What am I? What am I missing here? Was that written right, or am I? Or I just not know. Again, I'm not. Looking at right now. Which thing? This. That's right. That four. What is that four? I don't know, it's on everybody. I thought it was just for, I have no idea. I, thought, I think it's for ejection. I think that's where like, cause water comes in, it's gotta go somewhere. So yeah, they got a hose. Yeah, the hose is connected to it. That's what the water flows in, goes in ESC, through, motor, out. Yep, yep, yep. 
or it comes in from there and then goes out but there's definitely a hose attached to that side and then that's all water sealed so it's like nothing's coming in and out of that <clears throat> Dean, then everything else inside is pretty, well, I like to, pretty easy access to everything, you know. Again, with most boats, it would be, but see, everything's, you know, again, glued down nicely. That whole tray, um, you know, is like, a, this whole tray is like epoxied or whatever down uh, to the whole. So that could come out if you wanted to. There's a couple screws. You could take the black uh, parts out from the white. Um, it's hard. I'm looking at it the opposite way, like a weatherman. But like that part, like this black part can be separated with screws from the white part um, if you ever need to get in there. Yeah, there you go. Water cooling exit. I was right. The raw water pickup should be, the raw water pickup should be on the rudder. Yeah, that's here. In ESC. Then there's, there's two. Yep, then from the ESC, there's a hose that goes around to the motor. So here we go. So from the rudder, the hose goes in, it wraps around to the SC, then this hose to the motor, then that out the side. So if, and if everyone can see that, what did I just drop? But works well. <clears throat> How long is that boat? Raymond, this is 37.5 inches, 0.4 inches, about three feet long. So the table I'm on is eight feet, uh, and it's actually the table itself is three feet wide, and it's it's bigger than the table I'm on. Um, but yeah, that's three feet. So again, I, well, I was like surprised because when I saw the boat in the pictures, it looked like every other boat, which I was thinking, you know, it's going to be more like that size on here or some of the other ones. We, we've done a few of these racing boats, that jet boat we had, but... Um, let me grab let me grab a quick option i have one over here here we go so like these oh yeah they can still hear me with the mics nice it's so like this is about the biggest i've driven your standard rc boat this is a swordfish the bancroft one but just so you get an idea like when i saw the picture i thought it was going to be i thought oh another another type of boat like this i didn't like register the size of it until the boxes showed up and now i'm just leveling up from the uh from the rudders like that's a significant difference when i saw the boxes there i'm like did they send me planes or something I was like what are these like, and then i'm like oh they're the boats so all around just super cool and you got the size and then you know i'd love to see more color schemes and i, I will say too impressed with like the the decals themselves like you know you can't like peel them off or anything. they're really on there like it's it's like part, feels like it's part of the, uh, you know, of the hull. But all around, super cool. Which one do you guys like better? Make sure your hoses are tight for leaks and good cooling. Will do. Make sure those cooling lines aren't kinked. Yeah, well, see, that's, I, I do have to see that. Yeah, I want to make sure, you know, one looks like it might have a bit of a kink. So I'm going to, so I will uh, just rework that down i think with a lot of these hoses what i can do is there's there's they give you a lot of slack so i can i can cut them you know i want to make the the fastest you know fastest uh no need for extra hose in there so i'm going to do all that uh today because again i can pull i saw with the yellow one at least they gave me enough hose here like if i just you know of course then i pressed it on nice and tight there we go so like you know, I could pull that. That's a lot of hose there. I don't need I don't need that much and I don't need that much inside. So yeah, we're definitely gonna we're definitely gonna cut and make sure it just fits. We need and then I got some boat grease, grease up the, the shaft and such. Cause these things are I'm excited to I just wanna hear the engine, you know, I just wanna hear it on the uh on the water and we'll save that for when we go. I want to see it rip over the top of some choppy waters at 50 oh. in slow motion. <laughs> and Should then... we jump it? You know what this thing would look great? Hitting a brick wall <laughs> at, 100, at 50 miles cut, an hour. Can, can I build a brick wall in the water or can we hit, can we hit a jump and, uh, and smash into 
<laughs> brick wall. <laughs> but all around, super, super impressive, super impressive boat. And, um, you know, obviously they come larger, but we're going to need to find a nice spot on the lake. It's worst thing right now, this time of year, like some of the lakes are drained. So I know we're going to have to go a little farther. Part of the lakes they leave here in Georgia at regular water level. Like they can, they can regulate the, the water levels around here uh, during the seasons. So like the normal spot where we took a lot of our boats is closed for the time being. I mean, we could sneak out there. I don't think anybody would get mad at us, but that little pond we've been going to, definitely not going to work for these. <laughs> There'll be no space. So we'll get out uh, Monday. We got some, got some ideas for spots, but I'm excited. So we'll rip around this 4S one first with the included packs. And then I got myself a set of 5,000. Where are they? I do have one set of 5,000 three S's and I could do the soldering myself, but I don't want to blow them because they, these were for planes and I know I can fit, you can fit EC5 into XT90. I don't like to do that, so I'm not going to, but I got, I sent myself, um, actually I sent myself adapters so I can use those because I don't have any XT90s to make an adapter uh, just for these two packs. And then I sent myself another set of two packs for, uh, with XT90s on them. Um, that are 5,000s as well. So we'll have two sets of packs for the red one, two sets of packs, then I'll use the two that came with the other boat, these, for the other one. So we'll have, you know, four four runs at this thing before we go. And then I guess I'm gonna have to bring, you know- What do you think our best bet is for a recovery boat? The tugboat. The tugboat? I'm gonna bring a tugboat, <laughs> for sure. Or I should bring the Nimitz. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, my boat flipped out. I got an aircraft carrier coming. Send Don't out worry the scarn horse. Send out the send out the scarn horse. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Or Alex, we could try to drive these two around with a little net between them. There we go. The magic bees. Yeah. And then pull it in. That would work. But all around, I'm super excited about this. I thought it was worthwhile to uh, do a quick live just to. Just people, because you might not know, it might be the type of thing where if you're looking through our, you know, product pages, sometimes, like it's weird when I look through planes, right away, like in my head, I know wingspan, I know millimeters, whatever it is, it it sticks out. But with boats, I didn't even think to check the inches. I just saw the picture. If you're looking at the pictures, you might think they're all the same, you know, like in a picture, I can make this look like that you can't tell on the water what's what if you're just you know if you're angled down at it the right way you know you really can't tell the size difference it's not until you actually see it and you get a picture so i think the pictures of these boats should just be me holding it a human being holding it so you get the idea all right that's that's the size now that might now that piques my interest you know who doesn't like something you know it's always nicer when things are a little bigger a little closer to, uh, I guess, scale, if you will, but all around. Uh, super cool. I'd like to see a blue one. People might not like, if they don't like blue and up against the sky, they might not like blue up against the water, even though our lakes are green, so it would stick right out like a sword thumb. Drone with a hook magnet and line. That would work, too. I mean, I have a Mavic I haven't used in forever. You can fly the old Mavic around and just with a little thing on it. But my my hope is, you know, it'd be great if we could just, yeah, you know, the spot we go to has that beach area, so I'll try to keep it relatively close. I'd run in up to my waist maybe if I had to, but I ain't swimming. <laughs> not, in, not in January to go get it. But hopefully I don't flip it. All I know is I'm going to keep the speed, you know, Keep the speed in the straights and slow down in the turns. Like one thing I've learned from driving, you know, all these ships around, like, you know, you don't want to be, you don't want to be gunning it in a turn too hard. <clears throat> but I'll be excited. I think it's, so this one, what do you think for us? If, if the 6S are saying about 50, say 30, 30, 35 miles an hour with a fishing reel and tennis ball. But see, like, if it flipped over, you're just hoping to catch... What would you catch on a boat like this? You know, with a, with a tennis ball. 
You know, even I, I remember we I think had you're just hoping to pull momentum in over and over. You just grab, you know. You're just letting the trying to yeah. Let yeah the, you're just hoping it just like grabs cushion. a little bit and pulls it. Because what was it? We closer. flipped. We flipped something a while back, and it took me forever. Like I had a tugboat or had another boat, and I was just tapping it, tapping it, and like could barely, you know. I feel like I wasn't making any progress progress on it. So, um, you know, it's not easy. You really need like a net or like claw something that had like an arm that could at least that could generate waves that's what we need to create something that just does this Whew. that's the other thing we'll look at too see how the lake's moving and we'll try to stand in an area where if we do flip it we know that time will be our best friend you know uh raymond yes these are in stock right now i believe both links are in the uh are in the description of this video guys so right below me if you're watching um just check the description you can the link should be in there i believe i put them in there uh when i when i made this yesterday when i set this up but yeah these are both available right now and again ready to run so you're getting you know you're getting your transmitter you're getting two you get two 5002s packs uh once again because it runs 4s or 6s out of the box but as a ready to run you're going to use the 4s it comes with a 6s screw if you wanted to go faster then you need to purchase 3s packs two 3s packs that that you can run and you got to change the screw um to run it on 6s so start at 4s that's what we'll do in our video i'm going to learn myself so i'll start 4s i'll probably lower my throttle trim start at half throttle just feel it out you know and slowly slowly but surely work my way up and when we're feeling good Pop in the 6S and let's go. Yeah, I need a kayak. That would be, I need a Motion RC kayak. I'm gonna put it on the company card, Bill. Kayak incoming, here it go. Looking for an intern. <laughs> Must be proficient in kayaking in the winter. <laughs> We're hiring a boater. <laughs> that would be awesome. It's happened for, I remember one time, a long time ago. I forget where we were. We, well, no, we were on the back of a pickup truck flying a plane next to the pickup truck. Long time ago for a video. And then we'd always said we wanted to get on a boat with a float plane and try to have somebody just, you know, touch and go next to the boat. But it'd be fun to run an RC boat from a boat if somebody had a speed boat and then they could keep that speed the same. Or I guess you could play with the boat. You could play off the wake of the big boats. Yeah, you like could, dolphins do. Yeah, you could be jumping <laughs> like tubing, you know, things like that. You could you could play. That'd probably be really fun. I mean, if you're a if you're a boater, 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 I'm sure, um, you know, take you your boat out to go boat. boating yeah. with your boat. Yeah. Take your take your boat to boat with your boat. That would be holy expense report, Matt. Right? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't buy a kayak. <laughs> I would have bought it if I would have lost one of the bigger boats. The money's right, and actually, some of these bankrupt boats are more than a kayak. I'll get a cheap one at Walmart. Where are you gonna put the GoPro? Yeah, no, I, I I don't know about that. I may put, I have the Mobius. We may stick one on there if needed. I only put it on it like if it adds to the video. I feel like it's fun when you put them on the warships because like, you know, you see the, the tower of the ship and at the angle when it's moving, like it almost makes it feel real, something scale. Something like this, you know, you could, you could find, if I, if I mount a Mo, if I mount a GoPro on the front of the boat, and it's just doing this. It's going to look crazy, but, you know, you could get a better shot of that on a real boat. Why would you, you know, why would you do it here? It would have to add to it. You know, if it gives a good effect, that's, that's worth seeing, you know. Then it makes sense. But I think on the water, I would just end up... Because then if you put the waterproof case on, it becomes thick. GoPros are the worst in then the you sense... Off the weight, too. Yeah, and GoPros... Yeah, and the no weight. self-writing. Yeah, the weight would be off. Um, but also GoPro is just the way they're made. I always hated the way they're made. Like, you know, they're fat up top and thin this way. Whereas the Mobius was made, you know, long and thin and more flush. Um, those type of the run cams, um, I actually prefer them to the GoPros just for that reason. Because the GoPros have to stand up and like, well, now they're waterproof, right? Even without the case, too. they come in the little ones. squares. It's funny, they were in style and then they saw, you don't see too many people use them as much anymore. It's like, now that everybody has phones that have better cameras and GoPros, that can be everywhere. You don't even see them as much. 
but all around super cool. So any other questions while you got me here um, with my minimal boat knowledge, but we have Bill, my boss, in the chat with a lot of boat knowledge. Um, any other questions you guys have on these? Because if not, um, we almost went an hour anyway, about 45 minutes in, but uh, I don't have too much more to say. So I could sit here and ramble forever. Um, I'm sure you guys know that, <laughs> but uh, we're not going to do that because we have some other stuff to do on this Friday. What is everybody doing this weekend? Um, anybody going out for some RC anything this weekend? <clears throat> Trailer for the kayak? Uh, no, I would probably have to just strap it to the top of the van. <laughs> Or just leave it at the leave it at the lake. Find a good lake spot. Getting ready for Perry. Is that this weekend? Uh, is it already this weekend? I thought that was February. Why do I feel like it was? Is the swap meet this weekend in Perry? Man, I missed that. Why didn't I see that? Anything new in the jet world coming soon? Brad, you just wait and see, my friend. You just wait and see. Play in the rain. You guys got rain. We had a lot of rain. Uh, but then we had like some storms come through last week, but then we really had some cold fronts. Like it was this weekend, my, the kids, schools were closed Monday for Martin Luther King day, but then there was a threat in Georgia. It's only the second time I've been down here six years now. It's only the second time that there was a threat that it might snow. Like a 25%, there was a 25% chance that it might snow. And at worst, maybe like a 10% chance that we get one inch of snow. So maybe uh, when you average it out, maybe 0.05% chance that we're going to get one inch of snow. Schools were closed like by 2 p.m. the day before Martin Luther King Day. They closed all the schools down, woke up Tuesday morning. It was just cold, no snow, no nothing. So the kids just got a free day off on Tuesday of school at the threat of snow. I remember, you know, living in New York, like growing up, you had to watch that. You turn on, what, the news channel, and you had to wait What's for the ticker, scroll, yeah. and you're looking outside, there's like a foot and a half, and you still see open, you're like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> but, you know, down here, they just have no way to prep the roads, and people down here, you know, aren't used to driving in snow. Cars aren't ready for it, so, you know, be slipping all over. But they didn't even get anything, so my kids were hoping for just to see a little bit of snow, but they didn't get, they didn't get so lucky, but... All around, guys, that'll do it for me and Alex behind, uh, behind the camera there. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining. Bill, thank you so much for being in the chat, uh, helping us out with some questions. Guys, if you want a big, large race boat and you want Motion RC's uh, protection on it with customer service, parts, things like that from Bancroft, our brand, then check out the Alpha Boat. Man, it's awesome. Two of them available, hopefully. Uh, these go well for me. Uh, the goal will be Monday's looking like a decent day uh, from the weather. So hopefully we get these out Monday. I should have my batteries for the 6S here today. So hopefully we get these things right in the water first thing Monday. And you might have a video, be watching me have fun or cry and swimming in ice cold temperatures to go grab my boat, uh, you know, on a video Tuesday or Wednesday. But all around, guys, thank you so much for joining. And we will see you next time at Motion RC. Bye, guys. Thank <laughs> you.